Stock markets in the developed world have got off to a rip-roaring start this year, but emerging markets seem to be lagging behind. I'm joined now by one of the world's foremost authorities on emerging market investing, Jim O'Neill, who's former chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management and who coined the term BRICS. Jim, why have emerging markets appeared to lag behind this year? Well, there's a, first of all, there's a big difference between markets and growth. So they, ha they haven't, in general, fallen behind in terms of growth. Some of them have in terms of markets, but I, I sort of disagree a little bit with your, with your line. I, I, I think to generalise all emerging markets as having been disappointing relative to developed markets, it's just not really true. Uh, emerging market indices are dominated by some of the BRICs, which of course goes right to the heart of my past, and China and Brazil in particular, and they have disappointed. But lots of other uh, emerging market equities have been doing very well. Um, what I call the next 11, Mexico, Indonesia, Turkey, uh, the Philippines, many parts of Africa have been doing not as well as Japan, but certainly as well as Europe and the US. So you have to sort of look around a bit and, and pick a bit more carefully. Let's talk for a moment about um, China, which you mentioned there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are concerned that uh, as the Chinese leadership um, tries to engineer a shift from an export dependent economy um, to a more consumer driven one, yeah. that there'll be a trade off in terms of lower growth. Uh, are you concerned about that happening or do you think they'll manage that transition um, well, perfectly it's a, well? It's a done deal that uh, there's lower growth uh, and, and in essence without them saying it that way, effectively they deliberately decided to seek lower growth as part of this transition. Uh, and, and it is fascinating to watch this play out with markets because of course Chinese markets have generally been so disappointing and, and, and whether that's purely due to the fact the winners of the future are different than the winners of the past so it won't be yet effect, uh, indicated by a proportional representation in the markets or, or maybe it's a bit of both, uh, some kind of risk premium as to whether the Chinese can pull this off. You know, time will tell, but uh, it's, it's so interesting because at the time we're having this discussion, by most conventional measures, the Chinese markets are, are, are very uh, cheap and attractive. So I, I don't think it's worth uh, uh, ignoring and completely and, and sort of, I think it's probably worth taking a bit of a bet that they might pull it off given how much the markets have disappointed. But obviously going through a, a very different phase here in China. And who do you think will be the big winners and losers um, from that? I, th I think this is, this is the key thing that people have got to focus on. The winners and losers are going to be very different than the ones of the past decade or maybe two decades. So some of the big commodity producing companies and countries, such as Australia, I think they are losers. Uh, it might be not great news for Brazil or Russia either, and uh, perhaps for some of the African commodity producers. I think the big winners are those that can sell the Chinese consumer and not necessarily just luxury. In fact, the luxury sector might not be such a big winner, try, given they're trying to clamp down on, uh, uh, on sort of illicit gifting. So the sort of, let's call it luxury light, uh, and, a, and a sort of broader, uh, lower, but still middle class consumer. My guess is that, that they are probably the single biggest winner mm. of all of this. And is the best way to buy into that, to own Chinese companies or to own Asian companies like Samsung, or is it the sort of the Nestle's and the, and the Unilever's and so on I think in the it's West? a bit of both. I mean, you know, I, I, let's call it a, a sort of nifty 50 basket of some Chinese names, but also Western names, because uh, there will be some winners, further winners from the West who know how to do it well. And, and of course, there'll be some big domestic winners as well, some of which we probably don't even yet know the name of. Jim O'Neill, thank you very much. My pleasure. And to read more about the case for investing in China and indeed investing in Japan, the US or Europe, why not take a look at our roundtable, which you can find on ft.com forward slash money.